Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I should like to welcome you to this high-level dialogue today, where we have some very high-level speakers joining us. I am Yushi Torigoe, ITU Chief of Strategic Planning and Membership Department. As you all know, World Summit on the Information Society, WISIS, was a pioneering summit held in recognition of the vast changes the information and communication technologies can bring to transform our society, economy, and way of life. It was held two phases, in Geneva 2003 and Tunis 2005. As the UN Specialized Agency for ICTs, ITU plays an important role in the facilitation and implementation of the WISIS outcomes and 2030 agenda. WISIS action lines have withstood the test of time where all 11 WISIS action lines have served as the framework for the implementation of the WISIS outcomes organized according to the themes of plan of action. The WISIS forum has evolved since 2009 to advance the concept of the information and knowledge societies and has become the world's largest gathering of the ICT for development community. It is a fast growing platform that provides a fully multi-stakeholder vision and identifies emerging trends while providing recommendation on the future of implementation of WISIS action lines. The WISIS forum is introducing new topics to the international community, including connectivity for older persons, esports, and youth. 15 years on, the concept of the information and knowledge societies is really becoming a reality for many millions of people and around the world. According to ITU's largest statistics, some 3.6 billion people access the internet regularly, work, study, learn, shop, stay updated with the latest health alerts, or simply stay in touch with family or friends. ITU's core mission to connect and connect it, especially now during this pandemic, many millions more of people now benefit every day from the life-changing potential of ICT to improve their lives. This year, UN and international community is celebrating 75th anniversary of the UN, leading into the decade of action as called for UN Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, giving us 10 years to deliver the SDGs. However, there are still many millions more people of whom the internet and ICTs are not part of their everyday life. Bridging the digital gap and connecting the unconnected remain serious challenge. ITU is working with all its many WISIS stakeholders to connect the unconnected. In this spirit, I should now like to ask you to watch a short video introducing the achievements and progress of 15 years of the WISIS process, which will be followed by panel discussion. A short video, please. Uh, next, uh, Ms. Porunima uh, uh, Megan Mana uh, from Civil Society. Uh, she's a director of youth development at uh, Silpa Suraya Foundation. And congratulations, you are the WISIS Prize champion in uh, 2020 in the category five for the project Next Generation Girls Internet Security Ambassadors. Um, according to your experience and participation in the WISIS process, uh, what do you think are the advantages and how can we work towards the further involving youth in this process? Uh, please. Um, thank you, Yushi, and thank you for this opportunity uh, to be uh, among such uh, distinguished uh, speakers and be in this panel. So, um, so like I said uh, just now, like speaking among uh, all these uh, distinguished uh, guests and speakers excite me because um, ICT for Development and the work uh, Shilpa Saira Foundation in Sri Lanka did and the VCS process is actually what paved the way for me to be here today. So uh, my speech, I would like to start first with my journey. Um, so Sri Lanka actually started the ICT for development work around 2005 at the same time that uh, VCS process started. So my father actually uh, started a project called Shilpasara project, which was one of the first projects for e-society in Sri Lanka. 
and Shilpa Saira enabled access to local language e-learning for marginalized students through rural telecenters. The concept of Shilpa Saira project was actually based on VC action lines. I uh, participated in this Shilpa Saira program as a beneficiary and today I'm leading the Shilpa Saira programs as, the direct, as a director of Shilpa Saira Foundation. The opportunities created by Shilpa Saira enabled me to connect with local as well as global partners. And um, Internet Society actually enabled me my first experience to become a panelist. And that was at VCIS Forum 2016. So since then, I've continued my journey continue connecting with global and local communities and working towards uh, girls' technology education. So I think this story of mine is the best example I can provide you about empowerment in ICT for development. In this process, ICT and internet played a major role. So now, um, looking at the 2030 agenda, uh, what worries me is the people that would be left behind. And they are mainly those who are not connected and those who are using local languages. Among these people, a major portion is girls and women. So if you look at the world, the world consists of actually 50% women. But if we look at the ICT industry, it does not represent this percentage of women's participation. And we are all aware that the post COVID-19 society is driven by technology. The World Economic Forum estimates that 60% of global GDP would be digitized by 2022. So my question is, how are we going to include girls and women in this sustainable development? According to our work and our research uh, with girls and women and uh, technology, we've realized that girls and women need access to internet, e-skills development, local language content, and constant engagement to gain ICT skills for education, employment, and economy, which are key goals in sustainable development. I'm currently engaged in increasing girls' participation in technology. The young girls we train today would contribute to the sustainable development, employment, and economy by 2030. And in the future, becoming mothers, they would transfer this ICT knowledge and skills to their families and children, thereby helping bridging the digital gap long term. So this is not just an idea. It's a strategy built on gender equality, inclusion, localization, capacity building, ICT for development, and access to knowledge, which are VCIS action lines. So we can, so um, the next thing is I'm asking you, can we have a special focus on girls, developing girls in technology in the next 10 years before 2030? So uh, when we talk about girls' technology education, another major thing that comes up is the constraints, cultural restrictions, mobility issues, language, and lack of opportunities are free of these constraints for girls to engage with technology. Based on my experience as a girl in technology, my development was a result of Shilpa Saira Foundation's programs. Shilpa Saira built an open platform based on ICT that helped me reach my full potential. And Shilpa Saira enabled this opportunity for young girls all over Sri Lanka to learn ICT at a very young age so they can also reach their full potential. And we have been very successful with uh, this program so far. So finally, my argument is to achieve sustainable development goals by 2030, we need to strengthen girls' ICT education. And we have to do this by ensuring inclusion, equality, localization, empowerment, and innovation. And most importantly, creating global partnerships. So um, I would like to invite you all to partner with us and promote this idea to help girls learn technology and so we can achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. Thank you. Thank you very